Hey everyone, welcome back to another new video that will extend the last video where we looked at deploying Spring Boot JAR to EC2 and accessing it publicly. If you have not watched it, do watch it. But in any case, this video will still be relevant since it also starts from scratch covering each and every step. In the last video, we created an AWS EC2 instance, created a Spring Boot application from scratch, built its JAR, copied it to AWS EC2 from local system via command line, defined security rule for access to port 8080. This is the whole workflow of the process we followed. In a real-world application deployment cycle, which employs build tools, the JAR is created on a server and copied to a central location from where it is copied to EC2. Usually, this is also an automatic process. In this video, we will cover this process where instead of copying JAR from local system to EC2, we will copy it from AWS S3 bucket. But before that, we will also look at creating an S3 bucket and uploading the JAR there. While creating S3 bucket, we will also look at the permissions part so that we don't make our resources as public. So, this is the agenda for today's video. Creating an EC2 instance. Creating a Spring Boot application and its JAR right from scratch. Creating an S3 bucket and uploading the JAR there. Copy the jar from S3 to EC2, run the jar, and access the application. So, let's start. We will start with creating an EC2 instance. For learning purpose, you can create an AWS account and use it free for one year. In the free tier, you can use EC2 for 750 hours per month for free which is more than enough for learning purpose and hosting an application that runs for some specific times during the day. Log into your AWS account. This is the landing page when you log in. You can find EC2 here. If you don't see it here, search EC2. Click the link. Create a new EC2 instance. Click launch instance here. Or you can also click instances. Here you will see all your EC2 instances. Click on Launch Instance. Give a name to the instance. This is the image of the OS that will be installed. You can use any one as per your needs. We will be using Red Hat Linux. It lies in the free tier. It will be a 64-bit machine. Select the instance type as per the processing required. We will select T2 Micro since we don't need any additional processing and it also falls under the free tier. Next is the key pair login. This is required if we want to connect to EC2 instance from a terminal. We have to do this, so we need to generate it. Click on create key pair. Provide a name to it. Type will be RSA. Regarding file format, if you will be using Mac or Windows 10 or higher, then select PEM format and if you are below Windows 10, then select PPK format. In that case, you need to connect with EC2 using PuTTY. Click Create Key Pair button. This will download a file. Save this to some location. Leave rest of the settings to default. Click on Launch Instance. We have the instance running. Click on this. This is the public IP at which this instance will be accessible. Next, we need to control the access to this EC2 instance. Scroll down. Click on Security. Click on Security Group attached to this instance. Security Groups control incoming and outgoing traffic to an EC2 instance. There are the inbound rules. Inbound rules control incoming traffic to the EC2 instance. So, you can restrict or allow a client to connect to your EC2 instance. If you look here, incoming traffic at port 22 is allowed and it is because of this rule that we will be able to access EC2 from command line. Our EC2 instance is ready. Now let's create a Spring Boot application that we will be deploying on this EC2 instance. Open Spring Tool Suite. Click on File, New Spring Starter Project, Provide a project name, select build tool type Maven or Gradle. We will go with Maven. Packaging will be jar, 
Select Java version. I will go with Java 21. Language is Java. Provide a group. Artifact. Version. Description. And a package. Click Next. Select the dependencies. Since you are creating a HTTP REST application, select Spring Web. Click Finish. The project is ready along with the main class. Create a new class which will be the controller for handling HTTP request. Add REST controller annotation at the class to make it a string controller. Provide a get mapping with an endpoint and return a string message from this method. Now, when we access this endpoint in the browser, we should get this message. All this is covered in various videos on this channel. Link of one such video is at the top right corner and in the description as well. Now let's create a jar of this application. Right click the project. Go to run as. Maven install. This will download all dependencies. Run it and create its jar. Open command prompt and navigate to the location of this project. List all the files. Here is a target folder. List all files of target folder. Here is our application jar. Run it using java-jar command. The application is running at port 8080, which is the default port. Let's now look at S3 buckets. AWS S3 buckets are like storage containers in the cloud where you can store all kinds of files, documents, images, videos, or even backups. Think of it as an online hard drive that's super secure, scalable, and accessible from anywhere. Each bucket has a unique name and can be set up with different permissions. So, you can control who can access your files. It's a simple yet powerful way to manage and store your data on AWS. Let's see how to create an S3 bucket and place the jar there. Go to AWS console. You will see S3 on the home page. And if not, search for S3 in the search box. Click on this link. You will see this page if there are no buckets created. Otherwise, you will see the dashboard having the list of buckets created. You can use S3 buckets in the free tier to store up to 5 GB of data for 12 months. So, you can easily use it for learning purpose. To create a new bucket, click on Create Bucket button. This is the region where the bucket will be created. Select General Purpose as the bucket type. You might also not see this option for some regions, so no need to worry. The type is General Purpose by default. Provide a bucket name. Remember that the bucket name should be unique across all AWS environments, which means that if anyone in any AWS account has taken this name, you will not get it. Let's say if I use test as the bucket name, which is very common, and press create bucket at the bottom. We get an error, and look at the error message which says bucket with the same name already exists. So, provide a name for the purpose for which you are creating the bucket. Select the ownership as ACLs disabled, which means that you are making this AWS account as the owner of this bucket, and it is also the recommended option. Keep this checkbox checked, which means that you are blocking public access for this bucket. It is always recommended since you would not want your bucket items to be accessible by anyone publicly. We do not want the buckets to be versioned. We would also not use tags since we do not want to track its usage. Keep the encryption type as default, which is with AWS S3 managed keys. Click on Create Bucket. The bucket is created. Click on the bucket name to go inside it. Right now, this bucket is empty and we will now upload the jar that we created. Click on Upload. You can directly drag and drop the file here or click on Add Files and select the file. Click on Upload at the bottom. The file is being uploaded. It will take some time depending on the size of file. Once the file is uploaded, Click on the file. These are the details of the file, and this is the URL that points to this file. If you copy this URL and try to access this in a new tab, 
Look what you get. Access denied error and this is because we block public access to this bucket. If you go to the permissions tab, this object only has read permission for the object owner, which means your AWS account. And there is no read permission for public access. So, how do we access this jar? Click on object actions and click on share with a pre-signed URL. Pre-signed URL means that this URL will have the information about your login details and account in an encrypted format and is only valid for some time after which it expires. Once you click on this link, it will ask you the duration for which this URL should be valid. Max limit can be 12 hours. We will keep this as 30 minutes. It has created the URL and copied it as well. Now go to another tab and paste it. If you look at this URL, it contains much information other than the resource URL. Press enter. Look, it is now downloading the file. Now let's connect to EC2 instance from command line where we will copy this jar directly from S3 to EC2 without using the jar from our local system. In order to run this jar, we need to connect this EC2 instance from command line of our local Windows system. Open command prompt. Navigate to the location where you have saved the key pair file for EC2 instance, since it will be required to connect. I'm already at that location. If you list all the files, here is the PEM file. Type SSH and press enter. If you see this, then SSH is installed on this system. If you do not see this, then we need to use PuTTY to connect to EC2. Clear the screen. Type SSH hyphen I, followed by the location of PEM file, which is the key pair file of our EC2 instance, followed by the user. Now the user will be EC2 hyphen user, which is a standard user of EC2. At the rate, IP of EC2 instance we need to connect. For this, again go to EC2 instance. Copy this IP. Enter. We have connected to the EC2 instance. Check the current directory with PWD. List all the files with ls. It is empty. Remember that this is the Linux system since we used Linux image. So, only Linux commands will work here. Now we need to copy the jar from S3 to this system. For this, we will use wget which is a command line utility for Linux system. Since we use Linux image, this is pre-installed. So, wget followed by the URL of the file to download. To get the URL, we will have to go to S3 again. Go to the file we have to download. Select this. Click on Actions and click on share with pre-signed URL since we will not be able to access it directly as we have blocked public access. Create the URL for 30 minutes. The URL is created and copied. Back to the terminal. Remember to enclose this URL between single quotes otherwise you will get an error since it has some tokens that are considered as special characters. Enter. It has downloaded the file and if you see, here is its size. Clear the screen. List all the files. Look, here is the jar. Name of the jar is too long, so we can shorten it by renaming the file. To rename a file on Linux, we use mv command followed by the name of file and its new name. Enter. List files again. This is the new file name. In order to run this jar, we need to have Java installed on this system. Since this is a fresh system, Java won't be there. And we can confirm this by executing a simple Java command. Doesn't work. So we need to install Java on this system. We can install it with yum, which is a tool on Linux that you can use to install applications. So sudo yum install java hyphen the version that you want to install. Remember that the version should be same or higher than the version on which we create the jar. Otherwise the jar won't run. Since we created the jar using Java 21, we need to install Java 21 or higher. Enter. This will download and install Java on this EC2 instance. The installation is completed. Let's check the version. It is JDK 21. Clear the screen. Now run the jar file with java-jar command. 
the application has started on port 8080. Now let's go to the browser tab and access the application. To access the application, we need the IP of EC2 instance. So go back to the EC2 instance and copy the IP. Open a new browser tab, enter the IP colon 8080, which is the port at which the application is running, slash the endpoint that we have exposed, which is home. Enter. This is not accessible and the reason is that by default all incoming traffic to an EC2 instance is blocked and you have to explicitly allow it. This is done using EC2 inbound rules which control the incoming traffic. I told this at the time of creating EC2 instance as well. Go to the security tab. Click on security group. If you see, there is only one inbound rule which allows traffic at port 22 and this is the reason that we were able to connect to EC2 from command line. Click on edit inbound rules, add new rule, allow incoming traffic from port 8080 from any IP, save, go back to the other tab, enter, the application is now accessible. Finally, after you are done, do not forget to stop the EC2 instance, else its running hours will keep on adding and if its monthly hours exceed 750 hours, then you will be charged for additional usage. For this, select the EC2 instance, click on Instance State. Here you will see options to stop and terminate instance. If you wish to use this EC2 again, then click on Stop Instance, which will also stop the hours from being added to the usage. In this case, you can anytime come back and restart the instance. And if you will not use it again, click on Terminate. This will stop the instance and delete it. You can also delete the S3 bucket after use. Though you can skip this step since we get 5 GB of S3 storage in the free tier, but if you forget it for one year, you will be charged for this. Select the bucket and delete. You can delete only empty buckets and since our bucket has a file, it will not allow to delete. Click on empty bucket and type permanently delete. Empty the bucket. Finally, select the bucket again and delete. You need to write the bucket name here. This is just an extra check to prevent accidental deletion. The bucket is deleted and since we don't have any bucket, this will direct to S3 homepage. So, that's it for this video. Hope you liked it and I'll see you in the next one.